Hi everyone, I'm Tammy and this is Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom. Hello. <laughs> so we got a lot of requests since we started doing our YouTube lives on Tuesdays for telling our story about how we got started with a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So today's the day that we're going to share that. I will tell you I do have a video that I made a few years ago that's on our YouTube channel that is a little explanation of our journey as well. So you can always watch that. But this will be the updated version and also I'm including Tom on the talk today so that he can tell his part because one of the questions or comments that we got um, from more than one person is that their spouses are not on board with this way of eating and they just wanted to know if we had any words of encouragement or any ideas for them on how they could maybe get their spouse on board. So we'll try to touch on that as well. And if you could share this on Facebook and pass it forward and let other people know that we are live right now. We would really appreciate that. So if you belong to any plant-based Facebook groups and you can go in and post a link to this live, we would appreciate that. Also make sure you subscribe because when you subscribe and click the bell, there's a little bell icon by the subscribe. And when you click on that, then every time we go live or we have a new video up, you will get a notification from YouTube so you won't miss anything new that we have going. And if you like this video, if you click on like, that really helps our rankings on YouTube. And that way when someone's doing a search, we come closer to the top than at the bottom of the list. So that way we can reach as many people as possible. So we absolutely love your comments and your suggestions. And if you have suggestions for a future Tuesday with Tammy, you can send that idea to me at Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com or you can leave a comment here below the video. Tom will be moderating and reading comments when he's not talking. And so if you have any questions regarding this topic about our journey and how we got here, we'll try to answer those today. If you have some questions about some other topic about the food or something other than the topic for today, we will try to save all of those comments or questions and answer them on a future video. So to get started, that was a long explanation, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that I started this plant-based lifestyle in 2013. I was already a blogger. I had a blog called Nutmeg Notebook, which we still have. The, today is plant-based. Back then it was based on the standard American diet. And I had been doing Weight Watchers when I started the blog. And the first time I joined Weight Watchers was when I was 17, a senior in high school. And that unfortunately started four decades of yo-yo dieting for me because I joined Weight Watchers multiple times. I did Jenny Craig and you know, whatever South Beach diet, whatever the fad diet was at the time I would do. I could do great at losing weight. I just couldn't maintain it. So, which is, you know, very typical story. So in 2002, you want to sh hand me that picture, Tom? Sure. In 2002, we went to Europe and had an amazing vacation in Europe. And this was before all of the digital um, cameras. And when we got home and we got the film developed, I was absolutely horrified at how big I was. Apparently, I had been in denial prior to that because I remember packing my clothes and things for the trip and thinking, oh, this is so cute and I'm gonna love wearing this. And, and I really did not see myself at 174 pounds being five foot four. So I was pretty shocked. So 
So I went straight to Weight Watchers and joined Weight Watchers and lost almost 50 pounds, I think. Um, and then, you know, gained about five of it back and settled into what was my happy weight. Stayed there for about two years, but I had to white knuckle it to do that because I was trying to eat everything in moderation. I was, you know, trying to eat desserts and sweets and, you know, salty and fried things and, you know, just trying to eat everything in moderation. And that just was not easy to do. So I did gain back about eventually after a couple of years, I gained back about 25 or 30 pounds. I never did get back up to 174 pounds, but I just would bounce that 25 or 30 pounds. I would just lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it. And you know, it was very frustrating. And also my cholesterol started to go up, my LDL cholesterol. So at my physical, with my doctor, my weight at that point, at that physical was pretty darn good, but my LDL cholesterol was climbing, and at that time, I believe it was 145, 149, and he said, you know, if this keeps trending this way, then we'll end up putting you on a statin, and I was like, yeah, no way, that's, I'm not going to do that, because I know people who are on statins, and they have a lot of side effects, and I thought, I'm, I'm gonna deal with this naturally. And I was very frustrated because Tom at the time didn't eat nearly as healthy as I did, and his cholesterol wasn't as bad as mine, and my doctor said, well, it's genetics. I and ate worse than you did, mm -hmm. always. Always, yeah. yeah. And had better. And had mm. better cholesterol. And we had the same primary care physician at the time, and he said, Tammy, it's genetics. And so if you weren't doing all the healthy things you were doing, because I was exercising every day, and you know I was eating a low-fat diet, and you know low-fat dairy, and so on and so on. And he said, it's genetics. And if you weren't doing all the wonderful things that you are doing and having all the healthy habits you do have, then it would be even worse. And Tom just has different genetics than you and you know sometimes life isn't fair my uh, cholesterol over time ultimately did wind up climbing to where the doctor was starting to give me warnings so yeah and your uh fasting blood sugar too was high was so, starting that to was go all higher dietary misbehavior right um amy so, is suggesting that you get an after picture done in europe also Oh, that's a great idea. I would love to go back. I love that idea. Thank you for that. That's a vote for me. And we Tom's a, not that keen and, about going back, but I loved it. And so speaking of Europe, we have a viewer here from from Ireland. Ireland. Oh, yeah. see, and I want to I want to go to Ireland. It's so beautiful. So um, so to make a long story short, Sorry. so in two thousand. Uh, 12, our daughter was getting married, and I actually, I saw Dr. Furman on a PBS special, and it was his Eat to Live special, and I thought, that's great, I should do that. And then, I think there was a, a free ebook at, that he was advertising at that time, or you could order the, get the ebook very economically. And I did that and read it and was very intrigued. And I bought his Eat to Live book, which I don't have because I gave it to our son, but it, his Eat to Live, this is a cookbook that came out years later. So I bought that book and read it and I thought, yeah, I wanna do this. But we were in the middle of planning a wedding and I thought this is really not the time to make a huge lifestyle change. Then right after the wedding, I had to have foot surgery, and I was home recovering from that. And our daughter was student teaching at the time, so she was home that afternoon, and she texted me and said, are you watching Dr. Oz? And I said, no, and she said, you need to turn it on. Dr. Furman's on there, because I had talked to her about Dr. Furman's stuff, and she said, Dr. Furman is on there, and he's talking about the plant-based lifestyle, and you need to hear what he's saying, and you need to do this because she was concerned about my cholesterol going up and the trend that we were seeing. And so that, that was like a nice little push. I already had it in the back of my mind. I wanna do this. Then I saw him again and he had success stories on the show with him. And of course they looked amazing and all of their, all of their um, food related 
medical issues had all been resolved by changing their diet. And I thought, yep, this is what I want to do. So I did more research on Dr. Google and read a lot of information, found a lot of blogs and websites to read about the plant-based lifestyle. And then I needed to work up the courage to tell Tom what I wanted to do because I thought, well, this man loves to eat meat. We're originally from the Midwest. We grew up on meat and potatoes, and he loved his meat more than the side dishes. I was the opposite. I liked the side dishes and could take or leave the meat. But I thought, you know, how am I going to tell him that I want to do something that's so radical? But over the years, Tom was always extremely supportive of any diet that I wanted to go on. And, you know, he, he loved me whether I was thick or thin and, um, he would, you know, support me no matter what I decided that I wanted to do. So after I armed myself with a lot of knowledge and I'm sure he noticed the books that were appearing around the house <clears throat> and so forth, we sat down at the table at the kitchen table and I proceeded to tell him, this is what I want to do. Well, and you, you presented it first that you wanted to have a conversation. <laughs> can you sit with me for a moment? I'd like to have a conversation. That sometimes can be a scary thing to <laughs> hear from your spouse. But it was a good conversation. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, so I told him, you know, I've been reading these books and, and you know, my cholesterol has been going up and... I and I had gained some weight because I'd been laid up after my foot surgery, so I had gained a little bit of weight and I, you know, want to lose this weight and keep it off for good and I'm tired of yo-yo dieting. And then, uh, so I told you it was no animal products and tell them what you were thinking and because outwardly he was being very, he was like, you know, I'll support you, whatever you want to do, I'll eat whatever you fix, but inside... Um, well, I was sitting in the chair right over here. I remember this moment quite vividly. I think maybe even more than Tammy does, uh, because as she said, I always supported her her efforts in in managing her weight and so forth. And I've, she's always been a fantastic cook, so I've always benefited from any new culinary exploration exploration she did. But um, as I'm listening to this, yes, I was supportive. Um, we've been married 40 years, and and. Supporting your spouse uh, lends itself to a successful marriage. So, but inside, uh, there were two lives, two dialogues going on: <laughs> the supportive husband on the outside, and inside the terrified husband. Because inside, uh -huh. I'm going, she's going to take away, you know, she's going to she's going to take away my grilling and all this, and oh my goodness, and but but I know that she's really serious about this. So internally, I was thinking, okay, how can I survive this? Well, I was a, a traveling, uh, in traveling sales yet at the time. And so I thought, well, I can just, I can hit all the burger joints and five places out on the road, and then I'll just eat whatever she fixes at home. So, so yes, I was very, very immediately and purposefully supportive, but inside I was having a little bit of a, a carnivore panic attack. Um, but but I dealt with it at that moment in time. I told her, I think I was, it was at the beginning or the end of a work day and I was kind of in my business mode mm -hmm. where I was uh, in, a, in a managed state. And so it wasn't an emotional conversation. No. Uh, she has shared with me that she was prepared for a much different conversation and maybe even some emotion involved, but that did not happen. No. And so, and he said, I will eat whatever you fix, uh, but don't, don't back me into a corner and tell me that I can't have meat. And I was like, oh, no, no. I was just like, but I'm not going to cook that anymore because I'm only going to cook the way I intend to eat. But, you know, if you want to put something on the barbecue grill, you can. And so yeah, uh, we not, started... having, not having an absolute, because this did, you know, yeah, I was aware that something was going on over here with all this reading material. Um, some of you may have heard of the phrase denial, but... Um, uh, I was, you know, maybe trying to not get too far into the, what, you know, what were those books? I wasn't asking what all those books were about necessarily, uh, but I didn't want to feel boxed in or fenced mm -hmm. in or um, that sort of thing. So 
there was that psychology, and I have to say Tammy did a good job of not um, boxing me into a corner with her decision to transition to a whole food plant-based diet, which gave me what I would say looking back, the necessary time for me to digest all the information, mm -hmm. uh, to go to some classes, to, to get some educational material, and to, to learn more. And then it took me another about a year and a half mm -hmm. uh, to kind of arrive at where we, at, where, where we are at now. But I'll let you continue with that because there's some other steps in there. Yeah, um, so, so I dove right in and I gave up coffee right away because I always drank my coffee with creamer and I didn't, you know, I was naive, so I didn't know if there were like non-dairy uh, creamers that were okay to have. So I just gave up coffee, which I didn't drink very much of that to begin with. And I probably had, I think I had, we were talking about this this morning and preparing for today's talk. I think I had chicken one time after I started doing ferment and I had some salmon twice. In, in about the first six months. Otherwise, I dove in and gave everything else up. But um, we had company and I did a chicken dish and then we ate out twice and I'm pretty sure that I had salmon those two times. But, and Tom would use what I was cooking for my meal as a side dish for himself and then he would throw something on the barbecue. But pretty soon, it didn't take too long, where he was just he was happy to just go ahead and eat whatever it was that I was eating. And then we started eating. He joined me in eating. We called them our big, beautiful salads because Dr. Furman says, remember that salad is the main dish. And so we would have one meal a day that was a great big salad. So the longer that he was eating clean at home, then when he would travel, if he ate badly. Yes, my my. My job was kind of one week in town, so one week of, of eating good food, and then it was a few days out of town. And when I would go out of town, you know, I had that mindset, okay, you know, I'm headed straight for the, you know, XYZ restaurant. Freedom. And very quickly after I would eat that stuff, I would really not feel well afterwards. And so, um, and it got, it got to the point where it was it really did not feel well afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I wound up going then on the road to, I would find Whole Foods and hit the salad bar and build myself a uh, 12 or 14, 12 or 14 dollar salad. Mm -hmm. And that would be my lunch or dinner out on the road. And, and then, then we bought a little cooler. And then finally we figured out how to pack, uh, pack uh, you know, whole food, whole food plant-based meals to go to last me through two or three days. Yeah, at a truck stop on a trip, we found a cooler for truckers that plugged in, it was like a lunch box, but bigger than a typical little lunch box, but it plugged into the cigarette lighter and it had a little fan in it so it would keep things cool. And so then I would pack him food to help him get through if he had to be out of town for a couple of days and he would pack, um, he was into uh, the Rip, Apples, Rip Esselstyn's book a little bit and the recipes in here kind of appealed to him and there was Rip's Big Bowl breakfast or something like that. Yeah. And so he was making that at the time and he we would buy almond milk in small containers and send that with him. And so then he was eating pretty healthy on the road and he would even take pictures and send me pictures of his salads and she, such. She was always posting her, you know, healthy meals. I don't know if you were doing that at the time, but um, but yeah, I was showing her that I was, just because I was out of town doesn't mean I was off misbehaving in some fashion. We do have a couple of questions that have come in while okay. we're at... Okay, sure. Um, that are pertinent. Um, yeah. Um, uh, you touched on cholesterol earlier. And if I scroll up here, there was a question about how long did it take for your... Uh, this is from uh, our viewer under the median. How long did it take for your cholesterol to drop? Well... I don't know. It probably happened pretty fast, but we, uh, our insurance allows us to get a physical once a year and do blood work once a year. So we went in after we'd been on it for about a year eating whole food plant-based and my uh, LDL cholesterol was 145 and it dropped to 98 and Tom's 
even though he ate badly, was only 134, but it dropped to 95. So that was after our first year of eating whole yeah. food, plant-based. So we were pretty excited about that. And I didn't have time to look up and see what the total cholesterol number was, but um, that was very exciting. And another reason that I wanted Tom to adopt this lifestyle is there's a lot of cancer in his family. His dad had three different types of cancer. His sister has had cancer. A niece has had cancer. And so after I had read all of the information and knew what the standard American diet could do, uh, I was really scared for him for cancer and I thought, you know, I need to get him on board with this because I don't want that to be his demise. So, but I didn't bring that up initially. So what I did... Yeah, she didn't play that card. She didn't play that card initially. There were so, some other tactics she did, but... Um, so Tom's yeah. not one to pick up one of these books and read these books like like I do. And so what I would do is if we were just, you know, sitting in the morning, chatting, listening to the news or whatever, I'd say, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. Can I read this to you? And then I would read him a little information about, you know, food related lifestyle diseases. So a little something about the type two diabetes or about the link between diet and cancer. And so I was just feeding him little bits of information now and then. And then I kind of strategically would, I would I'd hear come in, him. I'd come down for my coffee in the morning and there would be this video just parked on the computer. Playing. Playing. And uh, I would just be listening to it. I, I bet she was waiting to hear me coming down the stairs and she pushed the play button as, I, as she heard my footsteps coming, huh? <laughs> and that way, as he was puttering around in the kitchen, I thought at least he will hear this, he'll overhear this information. So I wasn't act actually feeding it to him or, you yeah. know, making him listen to it. It was just kind of happening. I, I, and, think, I think there's, you know, um, not teasing. There's merit in if you have a spouse that you're wanting to to have them catch up with the education perhaps that you've received that to keep it from being confrontational to you know to not box somebody in a corner um, I had time to learn I had time to understand uh, and to kind of decide for myself because the how you eat is a personal decision mm -hmm. you can't push how you eat on somebody else necessarily, unless you have small children and then they're gonna eat what you teach them to eat. Um, but I think that was an invaluable uh, approach for Tammy to give me opportunities to learn and understand what was going on with the, the, the food world and, and come to my own conclusions, which if you read all of the science and listen to the programs and the doctors that teach about it, it's like, okay, wow, this is really good and true information. A couple comments. Um, SB, yeah, um, I have no desire. You have to tell what she okay. said. S S don't SB know. says, Tom, I bet if you ate a steak now, it would make you sick. I would agree to that. Mm -hmm. um, the last time I ate an animal product was you know, so, some number of years ago, and, and it was a place that advertises with a set of double arches. And yeah, I felt awful afterwards, and I have never gone back after that. It's like, okay, no, yeah, this is not good for the body. Well, your yeah. gut biome changes, and yeah. you no longer have all yeah. the, the properties for yeah. um, making that work. So one thing that I did while he was out of town is I, I watched the Forks Over Knives documentary that is on Netflix, and it's free to watch it if you have Netflix. And then I asked him, oh, you know, because I thought, oh my gosh, this will educate him and this will win him over. And so we watched it together then because I told him, oh, wow, you've got to watch this. I watched this Forks Over Knives documentary. It's amazing. And so he watched that with me and was blown away by the information in that. And so that was instrumental too in kind of getting him a little bit over the hump. And I think too, as he saw my uh, weight loss and 
how delicious the food was and you know how into it I was really getting I think he also you know thought okay this and, is doable I would, yeah I was never wanting for uh, it, the question actually was it kind of is on topic here someone has asked here I saw it scroll by uh, food cravings have you had uh, how did you deal with food cravings of things here from Patricia how did you deal with cravings for old food addictions in the beginning? Well, you know, certainly those are there in the beginning because we're hardwired to want the, the rich. most rich, highly calorically dense food that's in our environment. And so for one thing is I cleaned the pantry pretty good and I was only buying food that I wanted to eat. And we did have some animal products in the freezer, and Tom had some animal products in the refrigerator. But I'm pretty determined, so once I make up my mind that I'm going to do something, you know, I make non-negotiables. And so those things were then my non-negotiables. And so I just had determination because I really wanted to prove to my doctor that I didn't need to go on a statin. And I really wanted to show Tom that this was doable because I really wanted him to adopt this lifestyle with me. And so I think, you know, my determination for that, plus I, one of my motivating factors also was I, I didn't want our kids to ever have to take care of us as we get older. And then um, I wanted to, was hoping, we didn't have grandchildren yet, but I was hoping for grandkids. And I wanted to be a fit and healthy grandma because I, you know, I don't want to be on the sidelines. I wanted to be engaging in life. So I just was, I think I was very highly motivated. And uh, we did still get together with our friends. We had a group of friends. We got together and shared meals. And <clears throat> I would just make everything that I knew I could eat and take it with me. And I would, you know, take like practically a whole meal with me just to share but just to show them too how delicious the food was and I just wasn't tempted I guess to eat their stuff because I just after reading all the information and finding out how harmful it was I no longer wanted it to be a part of my diet and that doesn't mean that you know I didn't go into Whole Foods and walk past the bakery and think oh my gosh you know that stuff looks pretty tasty and it sure smells good but I I didn't have a desire to actually buy it and eat it, so um, what I about What about moving uh, uh, away from bread um, yeah, in that I process? Actually, a I, SB has the question, can you eat a bread that only has wheat, barley, yeast, and water in it? In other words, no fat or sugar. Yeah, well, I'm gluten-free, so here's a, another thing that happened. About a year after we went whole food plant-based, or the, a year after I did, I um, started not feeling good. We'd gone on a vacation, we came back, and I started gaining some weight around my abdomen, and I hadn't changed anything. I was eating really strict Furman, but you know he does allow, Furman's plan allows tofu and nuts and seeds and just some higher calorie foods, rich foods. So I went to the doctor and I had a physical, and come to find out, I was hypothyroid. And I, I think I was probably heading that way before I adopted the whole food plant-based lifestyle because I had asked to have my thyroid checked a year or two before. But you know, sometimes when it's starting to, to not go well, your levels, your hormone levels go up and down. And I was like in an okay range, but this time I wasn't. And so I did have to go on levothyroxine. And even after I was on the levothyroxine, I couldn't lose the weight, even though I was like, you know, being very specific about what I was eating. But the weight that I gained before I got on the levothyroxine just wouldn't go away. And then I, on the message board, I had joined the Dr. Furman's message board and I had discovered Chef AJ on there and I found out that she was going to be doing an online program and so and I had become kind of chummy with her a little bit on the message board I had ordered her book unprocessed 
and she had let me put a couple of her recipes on the blog and we did a giveaway and gave away a, a couple, one or two of her books. And so I wrote to her and asked her, you know, I'm hypothyroid, do you think I can lose weight on your program? And she said, yeah, I'm hypothyroid, I think you can. And one of the things you have to give up for her program is bread. And bread is really high in sodium and it's very refined because when you take a whole grain and process it down into a flour, then you get a much bigger dopamine hit when you eat it. And it, that's what keeps you wanting more and more of that kind of food. The more and bread you eat, the more, more bread you, you want. want. Right? It is. It's so true. So that was one of the things that I just couldn't moderate. And from her program and from Doug Lyle, and he has the book, The Pleasure Trap. And this book was so eye-opening to me. After I read this book, I felt like I'm really not broken because I thought I'm so successful in my life. I have a great life. There's so many things that I'm doing right. Why can't I get a handle on my weight? Why do I yo-yo diet? And when I read this book and found out that salt, oil, sugar, flour, alcohol, all of those things, when they're combined to make processed foods, they become highly addictive. And so reading this book was just amazing to me because I thought I'm not broken. It's how I was hardwired. It's my brain. And if I avoid those foods, then I don't have to worry about moderating because I'm eating whole plant foods that I can eat until I'm comfortably full on and it stops the cravings. So that was a huge eye-opener for me. I highly recommend this book. If, if you don't want to order it, see if your library has it or Google it because he has some videos on YouTube where he's talking about the pleasure trap and you will be amazed at how the brain works, how the science behind it and how the food we eat affects our brain. So the pleasure trap, I highly recommend it. And do you have that one in your list down in here? Um, it is. We it have an Amazon page and all of my favorite books are on the Amazon page and Tom can uh, post that in the description below the YouTube. Which you can find after the show. You can go down into the description and I'll, I'll put yeah. a link to it and there. And then he can put that I'll put do. the link there because all the all my favorite books should be listed there. Hopefully, yeah, I have it. If you scroll updated. down through all of the kitchen gadgets and and the groceries, then I've got all of the books uh, pretty much close together. So rather than do a bunch of links, I'll just put one to the Amazon yeah, page. That's you can a good find idea. Anything you're interested in there. Uh, one there was a comment over here from. Let me get back over here. Um, about I saw it go by about Dr. Gregor. That in terms of my. Um, you know, journey that you know I was behind Tammy on that, but when I heard Dr. Gregor speak, his his direct delivery of scientific information boiled down into um, terms that are easy to understand, but still clearly rooted in science, and his uh, what I'm going to call wonderful sarcastic humor at times, mm -hmm. I found delightful, um, and so I really enjoyed listening to a lot of his seminars, which really dealt mm -hmm. with the science behind what's going on in our own heads, but also physiologically what happens when you, when you, you know, give in and eat that odd slice of bread and the cascade of things that go on in your head and that. So um, his information along with Dr. Doug Lyle's information resonated with me as somebody that was following, you know, Tammy was clearly leading our family in this education process. But, um, but yeah, he, his information spoke clearly to me mm -hmm. and made my transition um, emotionally Tom, more justifiable. <laughs> and Tom really likes all the science behind everything. So when I would be reading him things out of books, that's what I would go for was, you know, this study showed this. And so then I would share that with him because he needed to know the proof and the science behind it. 
And that's why also I think the Forks Over Knives was very beneficial because of all the doctors that are interviewed in that. And then also we watched What the Health and Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And once you start watching some of those documentaries on Netflix, then Netflix starts to recommend other similar documentaries to you. So uh, for us, that was very beneficial. So then in 2015, I started this in 2013, started eating this way. And then in 2015, I joined Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss program online and I met some ladies that live here locally that joined that group as well and Donna one of the gals invited us to a meetup that the vegan society was having and Linda Middlesworth who is the um, the do you call her the president the, president of the Sacramento <laughs> yeah, vegan society. president of our Sacramento vegan society brings in a lot of speakers because she's not just an animal advocate, she's also a health advocate. So she wants people to eat a healthy vegan diet. And so like she brought in Dr. Greger and Dr. Pam Popper and Dr. Neil Barnard and we've had the opportunity to go and hear these amazing speakers locally. And so that was another thing. And initially Tom, you know, was going because he was going to support me because I didn't want to go by myself. But then he was sitting there absorbing all the information. And once you know all the information, you can't not know it. And so uh, that's that was also very beneficial to be able to go and hear the speakers live. So you might want to look for events like that where you live and you know, that's another way to perhaps bring your spouse into it. And I think just being an example, I mean, I just was eating healthy, changing the way I was eating and being an example for Tom and then our adult children eventually also adopted this way of eating. They are not SOS free, um, but they eat a whole food plant-based diet more like engine two instead of as um, I hate I don't want to use the word strict but um, they're not SOS free now about the cravings when you're eating starch because when I adopted the lifestyle initially I was following Dr. Furman on AJ's plan which is very similar to the McDougal maximum weight loss plan so this is another excellent book to read and then she has hers the secrets to ultimate weight loss and the food plans are very similar and both of these books the food plans are very similar to the way they teach people at the true north health center in santa rosa california and it's a health promoting diet so it's good for heart disease or diabetes or arthritis or any number of food related medical conditions. So uh, I forgot the point I was going to make when I started going down that path now. That happens sometimes. So then we started eating her way, which is based on calorie density chart and eating the low calorie density foods, which also just happen to be very nutrient dense. And so when you do that, like the cravings just go out the window. And we got to have starch because the McDougal program is based on starch. AJ's program is also a starch-based food plan. And so I was just so thrilled to be able to eat potatoes. And I just, I remember that first week, I think I, I had like a baked potato every night at dinner because I was just so thrilled to get to have potatoes. And then I realized how satisfying and filling they were and I was losing weight. And albeit slow, my weight loss was slow even on the ultimate weight loss plan because of my very sluggish thyroid, but I was thrilled that I was losing weight. My clothes were getting uh, looser and it was just so amazing. So when you eat the right foods, when you're feeding your body, the proper nutrients, it doesn't send out the call for you to keep eating more food as long as you're giving it the nutrients that it needs. 
And so that was just amazing. And Dr. Stephen Luenda calls it the magical buffet. And it truly is the magical buffet because when you eat the health promoting foods that are low calorie density, they're very satisfying and they help you get healthy as well as help you get to your optimal weight. So that was amazing. Do you have any other? No, I'm catching up right now. You're I, catching I, up. I, I do, but I, I was overworking on those, t on those tags and so. Um... Okay, so then the starch solution is also Dr. McDougall's book. So if you want to know more about starch and potatoes and why we need them, this is an excellent book to read. And Tom was talking about the um, about Dr. Greger, and he has the nutritionfacts.org. So that's like our go-to website because Dr. Greger analyzes all the latest medical studies, him and his team of people, and then he makes videos and tells you what the conclusion is. And then he also has this book, The How Not to Die book, which is just full of wonderful information. So if you want to know, you know, how much vitamin B12 should I take? Should I be taking vitamin D? This is a great little resource for that. So like I said, like Tom said, I was reading all kinds of books and there was all kinds of books showing up at the house because I'm a, I like to research things. I like to dig in and find out how to do things. Now I will say that when we first started this journey, I was trying to cook like I had on the standard American diet and I was making myself absolutely crazy because I was making everything from scratch. So let's, you know, if I was making a lasagna, I was making the marinara and I was making a, a homemade vegan cheese and, you know, I was just, oh my goodness, it was so much work. I was spending hours in the kitchen every day cooking up these, they were delicious meals, but they were so involved. And I was running to the store constantly to buy all these ingredients to make all these things. So. It wasn't until I discovered that we could eat simply and maybe reserve those fancier dishes for entertaining that my life got so much simpler. And when I stopped making tons of recipes and started just batch prepping larger amounts of ingredients that we could pull together and make meals out of, then life got so much simpler and we stopped spending, so well, I stopped spending so much time in the kitchen because I thought this isn't reasonable. I cannot sustain this the rest of my life. This is taking up too much yeah, time. Converting what used to be our standard recipes, it, she would start meal prep like at three o'clock to, to get ready for a six, she was cooking for three hours. Right, it was for, crazy. Yeah. And so we simplified it and you know, as long as we have beans, greens, and some more starches, we can make a meal. And when I started, I also got tired of making salads every day because we would, one of our meals was a salad. And at that time, it was our evening meal was usually our great big salad because it takes about 45 minutes to eat it. We have a question about salads. Okay, yeah. but let me finish my thought. So hold on to that. And so then I started batch prepping the salads. And so on Saturday or Sunday, I'll batch prep salads to hold us at least through Friday. And that way I'm not having to get oh, out all right. that stuff. We were stuff. building them every night and oh. you would stir them up and then I would pack them into yeah, the dishes. Remember? And that was before we were chopping, so I had to really pack them into the right, dishes. Right, right, that was before we yeah. discovered chopped salads. So that took a while. So then when we started, I started batch prepping them and then that even got easier. And so, you know, it's a learning curve. And I think that's the biggest thing that you have to remember. I get emails from a lot of people who are just starting out and they're like, I don't even know where to start. How do I do this? And you have to remember that it is a learning curve. I mean, um, I think my brain was doing flip flops when I first started this because I thought, how do I, how, what does a whole food plant-based meal look like? How do I plan this out. And I, another thing I get asked all the time is, you know, do you have a weekly meal plan? I don't. What we've evolved to now is we know we, we eat a lot of potatoes and he eats a lot of rice. So he keeps rice made for us all the time. And when we run, 
when we run out, he makes a big pot of rice in the rice cooker and he divides it up into four cup containers that go in the freezer. And that way we can just pull out a container at a time. So we always have starch going. And when he gets down to the last container, he makes more rice. I bake potatoes for us once a week, or sometimes he does it, Dep just depends on you know, whose schedule allows for it. And we know that we will eat a, usually a three pound bag of Yukon Golds a week and we each like sweet potatoes and so we'll make you know we'll probably make a dozen to 14 potatoes sweet mm -hmm. potatoes a week because we might each have one or two a day and then we just and we have our salads so and he's you've stopped eating the the rips big bowl breakfast and he has oats and chia seeds and uh, blueberries. Yeah, that evolved with, because Rip's Big Bowl had some some um, a processed cereal in it, and it started tasting processed. Mm -hmm. As you move away from processed foods, they they have a distinct smell and even underlying flavor. Yes. It, it smells like food factory or something. I, I can't quite uh, describe it. So. And that was starting yeah. to. And another thing that Tom did when he was first transitioning, um, because he was such a meat lover. I was able to get him to stop eating the animal sausages and so forth by substituting some of the like tofurkey, the vegan sausages. Now, they're not super healthy, but they were healthier than eating the animal products. Yeah, they're, they're full of oil, mm -hmm. but they aided me in my transition away from animal products into the plant-based uh, world. So it would have been difficult for me from where I was coming from to not have that bridge mm -hmm. um, but I was eating those a lot during the week that can lead to weight gain um, and I was eating them with you know a whole wheat bread wrapped around them or something but as I went to more seminars and it got more education I started to realize no these things you know are tasty to me now but they're not necessarily that healthy for me um, so we we we, we did uh, get we didn't move. I did move away from those. You did. So. Yeah. So it was a transition yeah. for him. You know, I jumped in a little more with both feet and Tom, it was more of a transition and that's okay. However, it works. I mean, I, I honestly wondered if we would ever get to the day where he would be fully on board with me and he is. And I'm just some, sometimes I think about it and I'm just um, amazed coming from where we started and the diet. So the person who had the salad question, was I? Well, there, well there's a couple of questions here. Um, okay. Let me go back and I had, a, this thing scrolls on me and then I lose where things are. Uh, okay, this is from Under the Median. Is it okay to substitute baked oil-free corn tortillas for bread? I find that it does help me to eat my bean burgers this way. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. We use the uh, corn tortillas we buy one, one ingredient, corn. Well, well I think and those have a little bit of gargum in them. Oh, okay. Something to make them some Hold. thick. But if they're corn and lime juice, you know, that's perfectly fine. And also it depends on like, it depends on what your goals are. So, you know, if you have weight to lose or if you have health issues or if you have trouble moderating foods, it depends. But, you know, those are... I think the corn tortillas are just fine and I use some occasionally as well and we make um, some chips out of them sometimes in our air fryer as well so you know it just and and I, I also want to say although I eat a very low fat diet because I gain weight super easy so I rarely do I have tofu you know maybe I'll have it in a recipe or something once a year or twice a year but and I rarely do I have any nuts, but Tom can eat some nuts and Tom can eat tofu and he can have some of the richer, higher fat foods and not gain weight from them because, you know, he's a man and his body doesn't store fat like my body stores fat and he doesn't have a thyroid problem. So just remember that when we're talking about what we do, this is what works for us. And this is what, you know, the way I eat works for me and the way he eats works for him. And I can't eat exactly like him and he wouldn't want to eat exactly like me because he enjoys those 
richer uh, foods and he needs more calories than I do. So, so it's whatever, you know, whatever works for you. And certainly if I could eat the richer foods, if I could eat the tofu and the nuts and not gain weight, I certainly would because there's nothing wrong with them or avocado. You know, I love avocado and I would eat those things, but because I gain weight so easily and those are highly palatable foods and I would get to eat such a small amount of them, I would rather have a larger amount of a lower calorie density food that's going to fill my tummy and activate my stretch receptors and allow me to feel satisfied. So, so that's what works best for me. I'd rather have, you know, a nice big baked potato than an ounce of nuts because it's just more satisfying for me. Okay. Um... Follow-up question on on the on do we miss the crunchy on the tortillas? Uh, there's there's a which way do I, I need to point this way? Back there behind Tammy mm -hmm. is the the Breville air fryer on the counter, and I put the tortilla. I cut them into triangles, and we make tortilla chips in there. And we have a video coming yeah. out. Well, we've shot it, but we just haven't edited it yet. Yeah. But we have a video where I'm showing you yeah. how we make our fresh yeah, no, no oil, no salsa. salt, no added, to, no added things. It's just yeah. just right out of the package. So, yeah, so I, the I like air, to do that a lot. And you can make the chips in an oven too. You don't have to have an air fryer to make the chips because before we had the air fryer, I used to make uh, baked chips in the oven as well. And so you can get that. Yeah. Crisp. And I'll buy the, there's some little tortillas that are out now called sliders, I think they call them. And I find those at Whole Foods and I think Safeway even has those. And those baked or air fried make a nice little tostada. So you can have an oil free tostada as well. And that way we get that crunch in. There are a so, couple of kitchen gadgets that have made waves through the whole food plant-based market. First, it was the pressure pots, a variety of brands of pressure pots. Pressure cookers. And then the second wave starting a couple years ago was all the little air fryers. Um, um, and, and we have both the big one and the little one as well. So, um, so pressure pots and air fryers are- Pressure cookers. Pressure cookers are becoming standard fare for a plant-based kitchen. If you don't have one or both of those, then you might need to maybe think about doing some research on that. Yeah, I would um, say that there isn't anything that you absolutely have to, to have, have as a kitchen appliance in order to make this lifestyle successful. But there are things that make it easier. And certainly a pressure cooker makes it easier because it's so easy to put everything in there, put the lid on, close the valve and turn it on and you can walk away. And it does all the rest of the work for you and then goes to warm when it's done. So I absolutely love that. I love my high powered blender because I love to make hummus and sauces and my, the Alfredo sauce and all those things. It makes wonderful creamy sauces and then the air fryer. So I would say those three things. Oh no, my chopping bowl. Okay. Four things. <laughs> and my and my chopping there bowl. might be something else on the list too i just don't know about yet <laughs> but those and those things are not a necessity to do the to do this lifestyle successfully you can do it you know with a tiny kitchen and a, a sharp knife and some pots and pans and a good cutting board so but these other things just make it a little easier and make it fun and we have truly adapted to the point where we absolutely just love the food that we get to eat. And you know, there's a saying that, you know, you crave what you habitually eat. Well, we habitually eat very healthy, low calorie density food. And that's what we want then, because that's what our brains are used to having. And that's what our body's used to having. We feel good when we eat it. And so that's what we gravitate towards. And then if you have about 10 to 12 meals that you really like and rotate those, that's really all you need. And so, you know, start making a list of the meals that you've tried that are low calorie density if you're trying to lose weight or, you know, want to maintain your weight and start making a list because most people 
are not eating a brand new meal every night of the week or every lunch or every breakfast. So, I mean, when we were eating the standard American diet, we had about probably eight to 10 meals that I continually mm -hmm. rotated. And I would say that the same is, we, well, we might even rotate fewer than that because, <laughs> yeah. because we really like, you know, I don't eat breakfast just because I'm not hungry at breakfast. When I first started this way of eating, I did eat breakfast. But as I got smaller, um, because I started, well, I wasn't quite a size 16 when I started this. I think when I started whole food plant-based, I might have been about a size 12. But um, at my biggest, I was a size 16. But as I got smaller, I would say that my appetite kind of went down. And certainly my need for calories went down because I'm so much smaller than I was. And then I realized that I really wasn't hungry at breakfast time. And we do a four-mile walk in the morning. And I like to do that on an empty stomach. And I realized when I got back home that I really wasn't hungry. And so in trying to listen to my body and eat when I'm hungry and only eat when I'm hungry, then I decided, well, I'm going to wait and see when I'm really hungry. And it turns out that I'm usually not hungry until lunchtime. And then I have my salad. And so I have my salad every day for lunch. And so that's seven meals that I don't even have to think about. And so then I only need to have seven meals. Is that your favorite? Earth by Bike has asked, what is our favorite dish to eat uh, well, to, for, to fix? For, oh, well, for lunch, my favorite thing is my chopped salad. And I've posted, I think it's like 130 chopped salads on my Instagram account. And then those are also on the Nutmeg Notebook Facebook account. And that is my absolute favorite thing to have for lunch. And if, if we're traveling or away from home and I can't have it, I really miss it because it's so satisfying and filling. And then there's, there's different things that we enjoy for the evening meal. We have the, the smashed potatoes. Those are air fried and we have a video on those and they are better than French fries. And we make them with our Yukon Gold potatoes, the smallest ones we can find. And we love to have those. And that can be with greens, that can be with corn on the cob, or a veggie burger. If you look at my Instagram account, you'll see last night I just did air fried Yukon Gold potatoes, corn, and a veggie burger that I, a homemade veggie burger that I had in the freezer. And that's a favorite meal and a stuffed baked potato because I absolutely love baked potatoes. So I love to take a baked potato and either put black beans and corn and salsa and, and uh, a vegan cheese sauce and cilantro and green onions on it. Or I like to put steamed broccoli and the, um, the alfredo sauce the vegan alfredo sauce over this the is top on of it yeah on a potato yeah that's we two did of get my that favorites. question dirty walter was asking and uh, then uh, about potatoes we have a lot of soup stews and chilies and i batch cook everything and we love to use an eight or a six quart pressure cooker and make a huge quantity even though it's just the two of us and then we'll take that and divide it up into four cup containers and freeze them. And so we can just pull one of those out and then we can put that over a baked potato or Tom usually chooses rice, I usually choose a baked potato. And we love, you know, a lentil stew or a soup or a chili and just to put that over starch and it's fantastic. Elizabeth, it's not that I don't like oat groats, I just prefer rice. And Tammy does fix the oat groats and mm -hmm. she's, Fixing in a quantity for herself that's going to get her through however many days. And so I don't want to interrupt her, her uh, spur of the moment meal planning. Uh, we, we kind of plan by not planning because we have all the ingredients in the fridge. So mm -hmm. um, I would eat them, but um, I'm, 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 I'm having the rice instead. Also, uh, on my two favorite meals, I really look for, I do have oats and with, with uh, blueberries and a banana and um, chia some seeds. quinoa and chia seed in the morning. And we get up and we go for a four mile walk and I'm really looking forward, I'm just really looking forward to that oat breakfast in the morning. Um, and you know, and Tammy doesn't do that meal. And then at nighttime, my favorite 
uh, well, later in the day, usually evening, I'll have, I'll have a, a chopped salad. And there was a question in here from somebody about eating the salads. How do we do eating the salads in the winter? Um, well, I fixed that problem last winter. Mm -hmm. I started making hot salads. Um, and, and, it, and we posted that. I posted it yeah. just in the last week. I think it was, it might have been last week. On which platform? And on Instagram and also on my Facebook page. I posted how he makes his hot Mexican salad using the chopped salad and heating it up in yeah, the microwave. Yeah, a pounded chopped salad, uh, a cup of rice, a half a can of, uh, half a can of, of low black sodium beans. black beans or homemade beans if she's made them, and, um, and some corn cut fresh off the cob and some cumin in the salad and I heat the beans, rice and corn up together in a bowl and mm -hmm. and all about the middle of the big white bowl of chopped salad and uh, well first I heat the salad for one minute, one minute only in our microwave so it just so it's like room temperature or maybe ever so slightly warm. So he puts it in a Corel two quart bowl and he makes a little hollow yeah in the a, middle a little hollowed spot in the middle so it'll heat up nice and i dump the beans rice and corn in there and mm -hmm. and i uh, and i use tammy's salsa verde on it or the uh or the chamol or one of our salsas on it and that is another meal that i just really am coveting as the day's going on i go okay i get to have my hot salad tonight so that's how i deal with salads in winter but it's it's kind of build into summer too, hasn't it? It has, he's continued that, to do that, but I like, oh, go ahead. A lunch salad, a lunch salad, I would prefer to eat cold, mm -hmm. uh, with, with cold ingredients. It's more refreshing and stuff, and, and, and you're completely full, because those things, by the time we load them up, are probably a pound and a half of this and that. Yeah, um, so. But, um, but you're, not, you're not bloated, you're not stuffy, you just are full and ready to go mm -hmm. for the afternoon. So on Sunday, we posted a recipe that it's it was already on the blog but I, sh I had never done a video on it so we shot a video of me making it in the uh, milthy eight quart pressure cooker and it's the hearty lentil vegetable stew and in the winter time I love to take that heat it up and after I've chopped my salad I'll put that hot stew over the top of the chopped salad and then drizzle it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar and I absolutely love that. And I'll do it with the red lentil chili. I will do it with other soups that are thick, more like chili or stew that are really thick and heat, heat it up and put that on the salad. Or if I want a Mexican salad and I have a recipe, I think it's called the Mexi Mexican chopped salad on the blog. And I will heat up my rice and beans and corn and, but I don't heat up my salad part. But just like how you would get like a taco salad in a restaurant that might come with warm ingredients on top of the cold salad. And so I will heat up those rice, beans, and corn, and I'll even heat up some salsa. And then I will pour that over the top of my salad and eat it that way. So that helps me in the winter time. And then usually after I get done eating my salad in the winter, I'm cold. And so then I'll have a great big cup of hot tea to warm me back up. But of course, we're in Northern California, so our cold is different than other people's cold. But it's important to remember that when it's, because it rains here where we live in the winter time, and that cold from the rain, it just chills us to the bone and so it all depends it's all relative it depends on what you're used to and so we still eat our salads though all winter long here even on the cold wet and rainy days because i'm just so we might used have to a it. cup of hot tea yes that's what i said we yeah, have herbal a, tea yeah. we'll have a cup of hot herbal tea after we get done eating so i wanted to show two more books because i it's been an hour it's after four no way oh yeah, dear okay i know we try not to go over an hour because people complain about the hour okay, as it no, is. Okay, now we got to wrap up then. Okay, so I want to show <laughs> I want two books that I really enjoy. Well, I should say three because I also love Chef AJ's newest book, oh, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, because this is sofas free. So salt, oil, sugar, flour, and alcohol free recipes. This one is. Mostly, I think there's only one recipe in this book that has salt. 
the rest are salt free. And this is an excellent cookbook as well from the Esselstyn's, the uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook. So I love the recipes in here. These are more like down home family style recipes and super delicious. And AJ's book, I use the recipes out of this all the time. They're very easy to make and super delicious. And that one also is, if you scroll down on the Amazon page, you'll find that one in there. Right. And then this is Kathy Fisher's Straight Up Food cookbook. She also has a blog, Straight Up Food. And a lot of the recipes that are in this book are on her blog, but I just, I prefer to have a cookbook. And so I love her recipes too. She uses a little bit of nuts, but there it's very easy to substitute other things for the nuts. And then a lot of the recipes, she tells you how to sub something different for the nuts. And she also does cooking demos for the True North Health Center in Santa Rosa. And so her recipes are absolutely delicious and company worthy. And I, I just, I love the cookbook and it has beautiful pictures in it as well. And so visit her blog to Straight Up Food because she has amazing, delicious recipes. So I wanted to get that in. And was there anything else over here? Oh, for if your spouse is really into the science of things. The China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell is great for the science person in your life. And uh, it, it will blow you away, all the information that's in here as well. So if do you have any other questions no, I, that I need to answer at this last minute. Um, and then I wanted to show, I've done some recipe testing. Well, there, there's one question here while you're doing it. Um, the question from DLR Cribbage uh, about videos on batch cooking. There's an earlier video we have on, it's called Batch Cooking Basics on, on the uh, a existing YouTube, on, A YouTube video? There's one that's Batch Cooking Basics. It's where you've gone over things after you've batch cooked oh, everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have on the... On the YouTube channel, we have one video, I think, of batch cooking. And then on the blog, if you go to the recipe tab that's up at the top of the, the blog page and click on that, and then you'll get a navigation page. And there is one category that says batch cooking. And you can click on that and then scroll that page. And you'll see I have quite a few, page, I have quite a few blog posts about batch cooking. And uh, next year sometime, we plan on having a course, an online cooking webinar about batch cooking, because I know that's something that people really want to know about. And we are going to be doing an ultimate weight loss class locally. So if you live in the Sacramento, California area, it's going to start on Saturday, September 14th. We'll be We'll be advertising and doing a blog post about it in the coming week with all the particulars. And it will be a four week class. It's going to be four consecutive Saturdays starting September 4th and ending October 5th. And so we're super excited about that because we've been certified by Chef AJ as ultimate weight loss instructors. And we're going to be sharing our knowledge and her program with people to help them get started on this lifestyle. So we're super excited about that. This is a great book if you you or anyone you know is really hooked on dairy cheese and can't get off it. And I was a recipe tester for Drina Burton who came up with the recipes for this book by Neil Barnard. And it's fantastic and the recipes in it are fantastic and this will help people get off the cheese once you read about that and then his dr neil barnard's book on diabetes i was also a recipe tester for this book as well and this is a great gift item to give to anyone you know that has the has type 2 diabetes and just so much knowledge and things that that they probably never learned any place else about diabetes. So we love books in our household. I and love to read them and 
expand my knowledge. And yes, I have more energy. There was a question about energy mm. level. Uh, I have more energy now than 10 years ago, I would say. When I first started joining Tammy for walks, it was a struggle for me to keep up with her and to make the grade up as the neighborhood goes up the hill. Um, right now, we just take that in stride. But yeah, I was... It was an interesting challenge in a wake, a waker upper at yeah, first. When so. I first started walking daily in 2002, after I joined Weight Watchers, I could only go for 20 minutes originally. I would go out 10 and come back. And then I, you know, added, got to 30, then 40. Eventually I worked up to an hour and then um, Tom had started joining me. And so we had an hour. So then we started increasing our pace because we thought well an hour is long enough but what are we going to do now so then we started increasing our pace so we could cover more ground and then we changed our route to include some little bit of incline mm -hmm. in it so that our legs would get a better workout and our heart would get a better workout and so we have it takes us about an hour and two to three minutes to complete our four mile just just barely over four yeah, miles. Yeah, it's a full walk. four miles. And and they're just like fifteen minute and twenty Some second, second. miles. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're walking some sometimes it's fun. We're walking along and we'll hear somebody jogging and it takes them a long time to catch up with us and then they're passing. They're jogging and we're walking. And we can talk with them while <laughs> they're jogging and we're walking. Because so, we're walking pretty okay. fast. So, we better we better go. Yeah. So they did improve quite a bit. So if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment if you wish. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that little bell that's next to the subscribe button. So every time we do a YouTube live or we have a new video up, you will get a notification that we are live or have a new video. Also, jump on over to the blog if you haven't already, nutmegnotebook.com. We have hundreds of recipes there that we have yet to make videos for. And click on the recipe tab that's at the top of the page. You'll get a wonderful navigation page. Our son is a computer programmer and he made us the most amazing navigation page for the recipes. And we know that the print is really difficult to use because it wants to print the whole article. You can hover with your cursor over the parts that you don't want to print and it will highlight them yellow and you click the trash can and it will make them disappear so that when you go to print, you can print just the recipe. And we will be fixing that in the near future. It's not an easy fix for us, but we people have written to us and told us that they're frustrated with it and we understand that. So we want to thank you for watching. We love it when you comment. We love it when you send us emails. And we're just so happy that we have such amazing people watching us and interacting with us. So thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week.